In this episode of Learn to Fly Here, we're going to learn about airport traffic patterns. We'll start by looking at pictures, a map, followed by an airplane like this one flying in a segmented circle. All that and more in this episode of Learn to Fly Here. This is an airport traffic pattern and the purpose is to ensure the safe flow of traffic into and out of an airport in an orderly fashion. Before the traffic pattern can be flown, let's look at some basics. Each leg of the traffic pattern has its own name. Taking off from the runway and departing is the departure leg. Next is crosswind leg, downwind, base, and the final approach leg, which is often referred to just as final. The departure leg is sometimes referred to as the upwind leg, which is incorrect. There is a difference as seen in the picture and also in the description below the picture. The intent of this video is to cover the basics of the airport traffic pattern at an uncontrolled airport. If coming from another airport and entering the pattern here, the pattern will be entered on a 45 degree entry for the downwind leg, and that's covered in another video up here. When flying an airport traffic pattern, how high should the airplane be? And do you make left turns or right turns in the pattern? The chart supplement is one place to get that information. Going to the top of the screen inside the green box, you can see runway 17, skipping all the way to the end. There's no information. Now look at runway 35. All the way to the right, you see RGT TFC. That means right traffic. That is a right hand traffic pattern. So for runway 17, no directions listed, it is a left hand traffic pattern. Another source and much easier way to figure out left or right hand traffic pattern is a sectional chart. Marco Island Airport is going to be used in this example. You can see at the bottom, RP35 means right pattern runway 35. And if all available sources of information, including the first two examples, were missed, there's a traffic pattern indicator at some airports. Right now, we're looking down runway 35. If you look over here, the traffic pattern indicator indicates a right-hand pattern. And as we begin the takeoff roll, somebody's probably saying, wait a second, we didn't talk about traffic pattern altitude yet. And that is correct. And the answer to that question, 1,000 feet above ground level. In most cases, in some cases, that is not going to be true. In the case of large aircraft or turbine powered aircraft, they use a traffic pattern altitude 1500 feet above ground level. But there are cases when a different traffic pattern altitude is used like the one seen here. And in this example, Greeley, Colorado, if you look up here, TPA traffic pattern altitude 5,497 feet. That is MSL read off the face of the altimeter. The 800 in parentheses means 800 feet above ground level. So this would be 200 feet lower than a standard traffic pattern. As the climb out is continued, you can see in the bottom right corner, the traffic pattern diagram, which will be displayed throughout the video. So you can see what leg we're currently on and what leg is coming up next in the traffic pattern. So I'll pose a question. The leg we're on right now, is this the departure leg or the upwind leg? One other note, there's no wind in this demonstration. When there is wind, when flying the traffic pattern, the traffic pattern will be flown slightly different, and that will be demonstrated in a future video. And currently the airplane is being climbed out at VY, which is best rate of climb speed, and also right rudder is being used to keep the ball centered, which also keeps the aircraft coordinated. And as the departure leg is continued, the traffic pattern altitude here would be 1,000 feet AGL. The airport is very close to sea level, so we're gonna use a pattern altitude of 1,000 feet. Within 300 feet of traffic pattern altitude, a left turn would be entered to start the crosswind leg. Bank angle in the traffic pattern should not exceed 30 degrees, and a 90 degree turn has been made, but this will be different when there is wind. Radio call can also be made, Marco Island traffic, Cessna 784 Tango Charlie, crosswind, runway 17. Notice I did not say left crosswind. It's sometimes heard on the radio where a pilot will say left downwind, left base, left final. Just say the leg you're on. The pilot coming into the airport should know the direction of the traffic pattern. Now the aircraft is on the downwind leg. The aircraft is going to stay at traffic pattern altitude until it is a beam the touchdown point, which is approximately a point between the threshold and the 1000 foot markers. This is also a good time to do a checklist if one needs to be done and also a radio call. Marco Island traffic, Cessna 784, Tango Charlie, downwind, runway 17. While on the downwind leg, it is important to look out the window and make sure the aircraft is not drifting too close to the runway or too far away from it. A good distance to be is one half to one mile from the runway. And as the aircraft approaches the point, a beam 
the touchdown area, this is a good time to start reducing the power and slowing the aircraft down. When the aircraft has a beam that touchdown point, the gentle descent should be started and one notch of flap added. Airspeed should start decreasing as power is reduced and flaps are added. The next question, when to turn from downwind to base leg. And it's approximately when the runway is at a 45 degree angle between the wing and the tail of the airplane about right there. Or another way of looking at it, when you're a 45 degree angle between the final approach course and a line beam the touchdown point. The next notch of flaps can be added as the aircraft rolls wings level. And also a radio call can be made. Marco Island traffic, Cessna 784 Tango Charlie, base, runway 17. And once again in the pattern, the leg is said, downwind, base, final, no direction is placed in front of it. As that left turn is being made to final, the last notch of flap can be added, and another radio call, Marco Island traffic, Cessna 784 Tango Charlie, final, runway 17. This video is only an intro to the basics of a traffic pattern. Chapter 7 of the Airplane Flying Handbook, as well as this advisory circular by the Federal Aviation Administration on airport traffic patterns at uncontrolled airports. Both sources will be linked in the description, and as always, thank you for watching.